Thanks for the invite to come here and talk to you a little bit about this. Uh, my name is Phil Gritzlocker, as you mentioned. I'm a, a, a transportation planner for the city of Madison. And we are at the very beginning stages of our passenger rail feasibility and station identification study. Uh, this is something that I think is going to be really exciting for the city. What we're looking at is uh, uh, putting together a study to find the preferred rail location, uh, the preferred, preferred station location for a potential Hiawatha uh, extension into the city of Madison. Uh, so that's the main purpose of this. We want to make sure that whatever location we identify is uh, feasible, something that we can actually purchase that could run the service uh, that's as realistic as, as, as possible. We want to establish a coalition of communities that would be served by the, the route, uh, get everyone on the same page, figure out everyone's needs, um, and uh, make sure that all the work that we're doing right now could feed directly into a NEPA document. Uh, so there's a number of studies that have been done in the past that are going to be refreshing some of those, bringing them up to speed, and uh, getting, getting documentation that's ready uh, as we identify this locally preferred alternative for uh, a passenger rail station. So it's a, a very exciting time. Uh, you might be wondering though, why now? Well, what, why, why exactly are we doing this? Well, we've been showing, as a community, we've been showing interest in passenger rail service for a number of years. Uh, I'll kind of rip the bandaid off and, and talk about high-speed rail. Obviously, we were uh, supposed to be an integral part of a high-speed rail uh, that, was, that was canceled about a decade ago. Um, and since then, the desire and the, the demand for rail in, this, in the community is not, is not dissipated, it's, it's, it's only grown. Um, luckily, there's a historic amount of funding available for passenger rail service right now. The Infrastructure and Jobs Act, or the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, whatever you want to call it, has $66 billion available for rail. Um, all of that isn't for passenger service. It's about $12 billion that is. Um, much of that funding is allocated to specific corridors. So uh, we're not going to be competing if we were to, 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 to attempt to get funding for an extension of Hiawatha. We're not competing against all the stuff happening in the east or the west. Uh, there's a dedicated $12 billion chunk available uh, for new service, uh, new shorter service uh, on existing corridors. Uh, and that could be used to upgrade track, uh, to uh, build out stations like this. There are any number of things that planning efforts. Uh, so we, there's a lot of funding available and we want to strike while the iron's hot. Um, but beyond that, we've been identified as a key connection in multiple rail studies. So we think that there's been uh, not just, there's not just funding available, but there's been a lot of other efforts kind of going on with other groups that have identified us as a key connection. So we, we're going to really strike while the iron's hot. The first of those studies that has us identified as a key connection is the Amtrak Connects Us plan. So this came out in June of last year, and it was really the vision for what a national Amtrak service would look like. Uh, but they got into a, a pretty nice level of detail when they actually talked about uh, routing and how long every trip would take. And they identified Madison in two of their routes. Uh, the first one is their Hiawatha extension from Chicago to Madison. And with that service, they're envisioning four round trips daily to Madison. Um, so they're, they're saying that that is one of the lower cost uh, routes to construct because a lot of the improvements have been have been made. Um, it's reusing existing track and uh, it would have moderate ridership. Uh, there's also a TCMC, so that's Twin Cities, Milwaukee, Chicago route. And this is one that you may have heard about for a number of years. Uh, this is there's actually a coalition between uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota, and they've been doing a lot of work for a number of years to try to bring uh, a Chicago Milwaukee Twin Cities route into fruition, and that was also identified in the Amtrak to Nexus plan. Uh, the interesting thing about this is in the past we have been cut out of that route, uh, but in the in the Amtrak to Nexus plan we are included as a stop on that route, so that would add three more round trips daily uh, from Chicago all the way to the Twin Cities. So for, that'd be a total of seven trips. Uh, that one, they're anticipating would have higher ridership, but again, would be reusing existing corridors. So it's, it's certainly feasible. Uh, so Amtrak sees Madison as an important place to go, uh, but it's not just Amtrak. It's also the Federal Rail Administration. In October of last year, 
they released their Midwest Regional Rail Plan. Um, and what they were doing is looking at the Midwest and trying to come up with the best rail system for just the Midwest. Uh, and what they envision is a hub and spoke system, uh, basically meaning that uh, there's one hub in the Midwest that would be Chicago. It's kind of where all the rail, the existing rail in the Midwest comes together. And there would be spokes out to different communities from Chicago. And they identified the most important spokes in that system. The number one most important spoke, which they're calling their core express, was between Chicago and Minneapolis with a stop in Milwaukee and in, in, in Milwaukee and Madison. Uh, they specifically identified Madison as a strong market because we have one of the busiest inner city bus routes uh, corridors between Chicago and, and, and Madison. It actually shows up when you when you identify all the different cities in the Midwest and look at the inner city routes. We have some of the highest passenger traffic between uh, Chicago and Madison. So they look at that as their most important uh, Midwest route um, and uh, look to have it funded sooner rather than later. So there's a lot of momentum in other other studies going on. Uh, so it's certainly a time that that, that we see as a, as a good time to strike. So we have to get to the not fun part, which is cost. Um, if we were to inflate out the high-speed rail study, um, I guess this would be last year. So $1.1 billion when we were looking at it last year, adjusted for inflation. So that's a lot of money to bring rail to Madison, high-speed rail. Um, that said, it's going to be cheaper for this. This is not high-speed rail. This would be higher-speed rail than is currently uh, possible. And since the high-speed rail effort uh, that was ended back in 2010, a number of improvements have been completed that were in support of that effort that could be reused for this effort. Uh, that includes an intermodal uh, rail facility in Milwaukee, a new rail maintenance facility in Chicago, and a number of track enhancements that allow for higher, higher turn speeds and higher passenger speeds uh, between Milwaukee and Chicago. We're still looking at uh, an anticipated cost of about $500 million to bring this service online. Um, and with that, we're looking at an 80-20 cost share. So 100 million would need to come uh, from non-federal sources. Uh, so that's that could come from this uh, from, from WSDOT, Amtrak as potential sponsors of that with uh, assistance from other entities as well. So that's that's probably the most complicated part and the part that there's a lot of behind the scenes lobbying going on from a number of communities. Uh, Amtrak has a whole bunch of money available uh, that they're unable to use as match. And I know that that's something that a number of communities including ours sees as a, as a potential issue. We're, we're, we're really hoping that at the federal legislative level, they're able to, to resolve that because that would make a lot of this uh, much more simple. Just a couple more slides. Uh, I wanted to show what the potential routing of this could look like because I think it's really important to understand how this service would differ from the high-speed rail. Uh, so it, hopefully you're able to see this. There's a yellow line here. Um, this is the existing Wisconsin Southern Railroad corridor that kind of uh, parallels East Washington, South, uh, south, south of East Washington, and then uh, meets up and goes around First Street, kind of where the new public market is, and then heads out towards the Oscar Mayer plant. Uh, the reason why this is the likely routing is we, we want to make sure that whatever route we uh, determine to be best for us could extend to the Twin Cities. So that changes our potential universe of, of options for the, for the station. Um, with the high-speed rail study, we were looking at a potential station at the Department of Administration right downtown. Uh, while that's still possible, it adds a significant amount of time on to the trip to the Twin Cities uh, because the train would need to actually come into downtown and then head out in reverse. So that's certainly a sensitivity that we're going to want to be aware of. We're going to want to make sure that whatever we're doing uh, is not going to impact uh, that Twin Cities service. Uh, so there's a lot that's going to go into this, uh, but we're opening it up and, and uh, HNTB is going to help us uh, figure out the best location for this, which is a nice transition into our next steps. So obviously we're right at the very beginning of this. We haven't even had our kickoff meeting yet, and we haven't we don't have a, a contract signed with HNTB yet with that early on in the process. Uh, but we are still forming a coalition right now and have we're in conversations with Watertown and Pewaukee. Uh, on, and those are the two other communities that would likely have a station on this route uh, to, to, to complete a joint letter 
um, requesting entrance of the Hiawatha line extension into the corridor identification and development program with the US Department of Transportation. And that would let them know that we have interest in this route, let them know that there's local support for it, not just Amtrak support or support at the state level. And it helps them figure out exactly how much funding they need to allocate to this specific project. There's a lot of money available, but it's gonna run out quickly. So we wanna make sure that they know that we are interested in this right now while we work out all the other details. Um, in this, in the previous budget, the city set aside uh, $120,000 for a uh, station identification study. And that was before we knew about all the funding that was coming in. So kind of good timing uh, for this. Uh, we have used that funding uh, to uh, select uh, HNTV to lead a station identification study. Uh, so very excited to, to be able to work with them on this project. And uh, that is something that we are hoping to kick off next month. Uh, and we want, we want this to move fairly quickly. Uh, obviously, obviously, we're not going to be able to construct it next year, but we want to make sure that we're making quick progress of this. Uh, so we are hoping to have our station identification and feasibility study completed uh, early next year. And uh, we, again, want to make sure that this is a station that we could purchase, uh, that we would be able to serve the route on. And uh, that's what HMPD is going to be helping us with. So there's going to be public involvement and opportunities for you to get involved throughout that entire process. We'll be presenting to a number of boards and commissions, and we'll be presenting to uh, Watertown and Pewaukee. So we want to have a lot of engagement. Uh, so very excited about that. And then I'll make one pitch for supporters. Um, this is going to be a very important effort. Uh, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing interfaces well with the BRT. So it's not even if it ends up, you know, on, on the on the east side and not directly downtown, um, it will interface really well with downtown. So if this is something that you are uh, looking to support, you want to offer a letter of support, something that we could give to the U.S. Department of Transportation, we would happily take all all of those letters. So uh, with that. I'm open to any questions that you might have. I know that we're at the very beginning, so maybe there's less info uh, and meat than, than you might like to see, but we're, we're very excited to be where we're at. And there'll be a lot of movement in the next number of months. Thank you so much. That's really exciting to hear a great, great presentation. Appreciate you sharing all of this. Um, I want to open it up to the group for, for questions. And if you wouldn't mind stopping the screen share so we can see everybody again, that'd be great. Well, I can start us out if other folks aren't ready to jump in. I wondered if you could just talk a little bit more of your sense of um, the, the matching funding piece of, you, you mentioned there's a lot going on behind the scenes, different places they could come from. You know, what's your read on where things stand right now and where it could, could land? Uh, I'd say Wistad is the most likely source, um, but there's just, that, that's, that's a challenge. You know, Wistad is, is uh, a state agency and they're gonna be beholden to the legislature. There's not necessarily a ton of support for that, as was evident a decade ago. Um, so, you know, they are probably our most likely source uh, at the current time. We're really hopeful that Amtrak becomes uh, eligible to match some of their funds. They have funding available. So to not be able to allocate that is that matching uh, funding is, is really, uh, it's a challenge for us. And uh, we've been in contact with them. And I think that if they are able to provide some funds, they will certainly help us with that. But that's that's certainly something that right now they're not able to do. Yeah, thanks for that. And I know you mentioned looking for letters of support for the, on the federal side, but are there state level um, legislative lobbying efforts that that folks could get involved in as well? Uh, not not just yet, but that will probably become something that uh, over the next few months, as this becomes more and more public, that that, that we engage in. Uh, right now, we have been just you know coordinating and, and making sure that we. Uh, in the right place with our, our uh, with our federal partners, with Amtrak, and uh, working on getting this uh, BBR, PL, and HNTV uh, on board. So uh, when that does Thank become you. available, though, I can certainly share that information with Renee so that she can provide it at this committee. Yeah, please do. We'd, we'd appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I think we had Chris, and then we'll go to Larry after that. 
Thanks, and uh, and thank you, uh, Philip, for this presentation. Um, uh, I was wondering, in the the station study location, will you also be uh, looking at development opportunities around uh, the potential sites or, or the you know the, the one that you finally choose? I mean, I think that that's certainly something that we'll be looking at. It really depends on the site. You know, uh, you know the public market is certainly an option. Uh, the big question there is um, turning radii and accessibility of the trains. At that particular location, um, in that in instance, that wouldn't be a con uh, you know consideration. Uh, Oscar Meyer is really a site that could be considered though, and that would be catalytic for that particular area. There have been station, there have been planning efforts um, ongoing in that area for a number of years, so that's certainly going to be a consideration. Uh, part of that again is that feasibility. If we can't purchase land there, um, that's going to be a problem. We know that there's ongoing. Um, uh, efforts in some of those areas. I know that Stonehouse, for instance, uh, has proposed an apartment at First and uh, and uh, Pennsylvania, right at the base, kind of across from the public market. So, whereas that might have been an option, that's that's no longer um, going to be an option. So, we know that there's development pressure in these areas already. Um, so, it's certainly a consideration. But I think the bigger consideration is probably just making sure that we can lock down property. Um, in, in, in this particular area. That's probably gonna be our, our hardest part of this. Thank you. Uh, Larry, you wanna go next? Yeah, sure. Hey, thanks, Phil. Um, always good to hear about some updates on rail back when I was at the DOT. It was quite a disappointment when it all got canceled abruptly. Uh, Jerry can probably vouch for that too. Uh, I was just curious of the 500 million that is uh, being sought. How much of that is for the for bringing the service to Madison specifically? That's that it's for the entire corridor, uh, the entire extension from Pewaukee to Madison. Okay. Uh, it's that's all of the stations. That's this, the, the track improvements. Uh, so that that entire amount is really what, what is needed to get the make the improvements necessary to get it to Madison. And, and are you aware, is there anything else being done uh, on the track going toward Minnesota or, or a desire to do anything that would increase the speed of the service? Uh, I'm less familiar with that, that segment. I know that there's been a lot happening uh, between you know, the Minnesota Department of Transportation and WSDOT. In terms of uh, specifics, I'm not 100% sure, but this would be an opportunity to get those things done. Uh, one thing that's well, really unique well, about- I can probably, I can weigh in that, in that a little bit. Um, I've been working on the TCMC project with WSDOT for some years, and um, <clears throat> that project will have some improvements, um, some track improvements and some signal improvements, um, mostly in La Crosse and Minnesota is where the improvements are needed um, to do that additional round trip um, to extend the Hiawatha up to Minnesota. Um, so there are, um, there are some improvements that will be done as part of that, um, as part of that project along this corridor, not necessarily between Milwaukee and Madison, but, um, you know, the full corridor, um, when we think about developing out Chicago to, uh, all the way up to the Twin Cities. Thank you. Great. Thanks for that. Uh, we had a question in the chat as well from Tim. I'll just read this out. Um, could you discuss what possibilities there are for connecting the most likely location of the ter terminal to the downtown area? Bus service, an additional train spur that could be accessed with a transfer? Yeah, and, you know, this is wide open right now. Um, you know, we, we aren't ruling out downtown yet. I mean, that's what this study would do is, is, is determine the feasibility of that. Uh, if it is not able to make it downtown, the most likely alternative would be to get it on the BRT system. Uh, we have this, this significant investment in that, uh, and there will be quick trips, fast service uh, in some of these areas, 10 minute service all the way to the downtown area. So we wouldn't want to be duplicative of that with you know a train or an additional bus uh, if, if we already have that connection. But that's going to be a factor as we're figuring out where this station is going to be. If it's not downtown, it really should be uh, near a BRT station. And those, those locations are becoming more and more fixed. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Definitely. Great. Thanks for that. Other questions for Philip?
Can I? Oh, ask Chris got one? another one. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I've got lots. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keep uh, you, you, you mentioned the, the the two options for bringing trains to Madison and extension from Milwaukee and, and getting Madison on the, the TCMC route. Maybe easy is not the right word, but which of those do you think is easiest? Definitely the, the Hiawatha extension, uh, Chicago and Madison. Uh, that's the one that there's certainly the most movement behind right now. Mm -hmm. But TCMC has been going on for a number of years. We want to make sure that whatever we're doing isn't eliminating that as a possibility, uh, mm -hmm. that Madison stop as a possibility. And that's that's why you kind of see that horseshoe belt that we're, we're, we're looking at. Um, is, is our likely uh, routing to the community. Um, and it's certainly a possibility that that happens, but we're really zeroing in on that trip, that those four daily trips on the Hiawatha uh, with Madison as a terminus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even though that has that $500 million price tag for that route, that's still the best bet. Yeah, that's 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 what we're hearing from our federal partners. That one's kind of the, the one that they're zeroing in on. Okay. Thanks. Great. Well, thank you so much for the awesome presentation and great questions. Uh, really important topic that we will definitely stay connected to as things develop going forward. And I, I think I see Jason reaching for the unmute button. <laughs> Go for it. Hi, uh, technology. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to say, Phil, thank you very much for, for your assistance with this. Um, know that we're working with a lot of organizations, DMI, Destination Madison, the Chamber, uh, High Speed Rail Alliance, uh, and Chris and the team uh, to really coalesce together to help you all with this, we've had conversations with the mayor, with Tom Lynch, with you uh, as well. So know that we're ready and willing to help when we can to provide that support that you all need. Uh, this is very important for downtown, even if the station's not directly in downtown, but make sure we have those connections to quickly and, and efficiently into downtown. So we are here to support uh, when the time comes. So let's make sure we stay connected. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. Great, thanks. And Jason, any other closing announcements that we'd like to make? Otherwise, we can give people a couple minutes back on the Friday morning. I know, no, this is very nice. No, just join us in two weeks at the next What's Up Downtown Breakfast at the Edgewater Hotel. That'll be hybrid as well on Zoom. We have Joe Lanis from Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra. Uh, and we'll see you next month here at the committee. We're talking about uh, the off-road uh, bike track work that the city is doing. So we're excited to have uh, bike back on our agenda Next month, that is going to be July 8th, Friday, July 8th at 8 o'clock. I promise to have less of a rinky-dink hybrid set, set up than this. <laughs>